Hey guys, we're at Outdoor Demo Day for Interbike and we're looking at some awesome new products from Focus. This is the Bold Squared and people have been talking all about this bike, just how, how integrated the motor is, how sleek the battery is, the fact that this has a Q factor of 175 millimeters. So it's the same as a traditional bike, whereas a lot of other electric bikes, you know, it's slightly longer that the axle, right? So, or the spindle. Um, things like that, where Focus is really trying to, it seems like, offer bicycles or electric bicycles. Same geometry, very similar feel, really not that even much more weight. So this bike weighs 44.1 pounds as is with, with the stock battery, which is built right into that down tube. I weighed the battery earlier and it only weighs 4.7 pounds. I mean, that's, that's amazing. By comparison, the Bosch Power Pack, which is a similar size in terms of capacity, weighs about 5.4 to 5.7 pounds. So that's like a whole pound right there just on the battery. And it's beautifully integrated into that down tube. Not something that you can take off very easily after each ride. You have to take the motor out and, and slide it out through the, through the bottom. Um, however, they do offer some neat battery upgrades. I'm gonna talk about those a little bit later. Um, you can get a, a hint at that with the charging port right there. So when you're going to charge the battery, plug in right there, it's energy bus, magnetic charging standard. Just very cool. The, the way they've put this bike together, to me, is, is kind of the future. It's like, you can hardly even tell it's an electric bike just looking at it from the side. Excellent drivetrain. It's a one by. So I think we've got uh, 46, what is it? What? Chris, what was the chain ring? Uh, 34 tooth. 34 tooth. Okay, I was like, this looks a little bit small. So 34 tooth, narrow wide on that chain ring. Uh, and then back here we have an 11 speed Shimano Dior XT is what it says on our demo bike. But this is sort of a European bike that's been flashed for the United States. So we're able to go 20 miles per hour. Uh, however, some of the, the features and specs might be slightly different. So still an 11 speed, 11 to, I believe it's 46 teeth, whereas this has 48. Does that sound right, right to you, Chris? Right. Yeah, so the, the bikes that are coming to the U.S. will have the SLX cassette, which is 11 to 46. Mm -hmm. And this one goes to 48, it's the XT uh, cassette. So, so some specs slightly different. The other main thing is that this has the Dior XT Di2 where the other one is. Uh, That's right. This is all electric. And one of the things I love about this Di2 setup isn't just that you have electronic shifting, which tends to be really reliable and really quick, um, but that the Shimano interface is powered by the main battery pack. It doesn't have a separate battery on its own, which is something that I've seen maybe with like the, the Stromer. That's um, right, yeah. It's kind of annoying sometimes you have to charge that item separately, you know. It's minor. I don't think you have to charge it very frequently, but we're talking like all Shimano across this bike, right? The drivetrain, the battery, and, and actually I shouldn't say that because the battery in this case I think is packed by Focus. Yeah, so this is actually one of the only uh, systems out there that that Shimano they have a close relationship with Focus and they allowed them to do their own power pack um, so they were able to you know meet some of the di design constraints that they have and Focus has been making their batteries themselves for quite some time so they have a lot of experience with that so and the impulse system yeah exactly so the impulse system among some others they've been using their own battery packs and they're familiar with how to do that and how to do it well and so yeah. They, they made their own pack for this design. And I like the I like the choices that were made. This is a smaller pack. It's lighter weight, uh, roughly 36 uh, volts, 10.5 amp hours. Whereas a lot of batteries these days, it's like 36 volts, 11 amp hours. That's the power pack 400 or 36 volts, like 14 amp hours, right. so something like that. So to, to, it kind of feels like step backwards or is it, I mean, smaller, what does that mean? But you get a really efficient mid-drive motor system that responds to your shifting. You end up with a lighter bike. This is 44.1 pounds. Um, that's pretty phenomenal for a mountain bike with plus size tires with boost. I mean, Absolutely. This, yeah, I think the main concept here is just a, a slight extension of a traditional bike. It's not intended to fully take off into that uh, electric category and try to bridge that gap between a traditional bike and electric bike. Yeah. Try to keep the weight real down real low. Uh, one of the real nice things with this system is there's very little resistance when you're pedaling without power. Uh -huh. I think, you know, you and I were riding up here going above 20 and you notice that, you know, it's it's doesn't take too much to go beyond that so it's pretty nice compared to the Bosch mid drive this doesn't spin the chain ring two and a half times for every chain ring re revolution it's it's like you just pedal it's got a traditional chain ring on there and right. it's one for one 
basically. Right. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's, there's no reduction gear inside. There we go. Yeah, there's so, so there's no gearbox, kind of creating a little bit of, of noise and uh, perhaps friction. Uh, you know, this this is an answer, and maybe we'll see something like that from, from Bosch in the future, but it just it's a little bit more traditional. I love that they've got this plastic, um, it's like a chain guide, so the chain's not going to flop off as easily. It's pretty important when you're off-road and bouncing around on rocks and stuff and potentially going a little bit faster on average. Uh, back here, just looking at that cassette we were pointing out earlier, love that they've got this big rubber slap guard. It's going to keep the, the frame looking nice. Beautiful satin with a little bit of gloss black on the logo here. It says focus if you can't see that and then blues and that goes all the way through to the suspension fork. This is RockShox Yari, 120 millimeters of travel. It's an air fork, so you can adjust, you can kind of sag it and for your for your body weight or your ride preference. Clicker for a compression adjust with lockout. And then I believe, yeah, if we come down here, we've got rapid recovery rebound adjust as well. Quick release. I mentioned boost before, so that means that the hub is a little bit uh, longer and it gives you a better bracing angle on those spokes. These appear to be 15 gauge spokes, okay? So not 14 gauge, they're a little bit, maybe a little bit more flexible, a little bit lighter weight. This is higher quality stuff and we've got a DT Swiss wheel set and hub on the demo bike. But what was the brand we were talking about? Maybe the... Well, so the, the wheels are race face. Yeah, that's right. On the bike that will be coming to the States and they'll also have a slightly different shock as the uh, Revelation RL on that fork. Oh, thank you. So yeah. still rock shocks, still but Still rock it's shocks, like... 120 millimeter travel, yep. Cool. So I realized there's a little bit of like, well, what is it, guys? <laughs> the thing is, this bike comes in a, a few different flavors. That we're looking at the Bold Squared Plus. That refers to the plus size tires. These are knobby nicks. Um, you think that's even it, those they, for America? We might get the Maxxis uh, Recon over there. 27.5 by 2.8. So that's the plus size. And, and then there's Pro, which that bike is kind of specced as Pro over there. And that's the full suspension. That's the jam square. We're going to review that separately. Or there's just kind of the, the standard plus, right? And, and then they have the option of 29er tires or the plus size tires. And of course, in this case, we have the plus size 27.5. So, you know, there's, there's a lot to be said for which components you're going to get and everything. But I, I wanted to cover this as thoroughly as possible because it's mostly, to me, it's about the platform. It's about how that battery is integrated. It's about these air channels right here that actually divert some air down and hopefully cool the battery and, and then even flush out at the, at the motor. And one of the Shimano reps was like, oh, this is submersible. I mean, this motor is you know, fully sealed. I don't know if I would take this through a deep river personally, but it's nice to hear them so confident that like, yeah, you know, this stuff, they didn't give me a rating like IP67 rating or whatever. But again, that it's all so connected and clean. This display, it does everything. It's, it's the DI2 shifting if you get a bike that's set up that way. It's also the three levels of assist. So there's off, eco, trail, and then was it boost? That's right, yep. Yeah, so three different levels, and the two higher levels can be adjusted with this app. So there's the eTube app, it uses Bluetooth. They also have Ant Plus wireless compatibility for like your heart rate monitors and stuff. We're gonna get into those details in a minute. This bike is almost about to fall over, so I think we're, I think we're all set. No kickstands by default, but we do have an 18 millimeter standard kickstand mount on the, uh-oh, that, there we go. We, we lost the bike. <laughs> Doesn't look like it was down. Let's just leave it down, man. It's it's fine. We'll get back to that. Uh, looking at these these brakes, this is another area. We've got the Dior XT on here, but I think they probably come with SLX for the standard bold squared plus. Uh, 180 millimeter in the rear, 203 millimeters up front. So larger diameter. That's going to be especially useful for the 29er bike if, if you go that route because you know you need that mechanical advantage for a larger wheel set. To me. This this hardtail bold squared. It's it's more of a it's more of a cross country or like a trail bike, right? Especially being a hardtail, and it does have some mounting points. We were trying to figure this out. Right, right, yeah. So it's got you know mounting points for a kickstand. It's got mounting points for a rear fender, if you wanted. Um, I I know that uh, Focus does have other bikes that they have their own proprietary system. We're hoping maybe we could work with them and try to figure out some way to to mount that system up. And it, lights, it, right? Yeah, you that can was actually hook lights up to the system. We're actually talking with one of the uh, focus guys from Germany and one of the factory guys actually set the bike up with lights on it as it's a commuter bike and, 
and I think it's quite capable for that sort of thing and it's and it's really nice uh, to, to do kind of that on off road thing and and I think that's they, they have that concept quite a bit and they've been exploring that for some time where you commute to work and then on your lunch break you hit some trails and that sort of thing and yeah. I think a lot of people really would appreciate that sort of uh, experience I would definitely but for those of us maybe you're an early adopter and you're getting this right when it comes into the states around 2018 you might just have to jerry-rig your own fender rack setup and it is nice that at least they have the bosses and they have bottle cage bosses down here which i'm always calling out as someone who rides a little bit further oh boy we got these bikes are falling down all over the place again outdoor demo day it's a little windy and chris by the way this is chris nolte from propel bikes in brooklyn He's kind of a lead dealer that tends to get the Euro bikes a bit earlier and sort of a higher end uh, guy. And so I was fortunate. I appreciate your help with this, Chris. It's nice to, you've been researching these because you carry predominantly Bosch and now it's yeah. like, well, there's some, some real competitors in this space. Yeah. So we've been seeing them for a little while, you know, a Euro bike. <laughs> that, you know, different dealer events or at Eurobike, just at Eurobike a couple weeks ago. And, you know, it's great to see some of that stuff, you know, starting to trickle down over here. And, right. and this is one of the platforms we've been most excited about coming to the States. And it, it sounds like it's not going to be too far off. So. so the reason he ran over there when the bike tipped is because I was talking about the bottle cage bosses here, but they also have this little adapter so you can slide on uh, a second bottle cage boss. You have to, it's kind of a two handed thing. Oh, thanks. It is upside down. Kind of a two handed thing, but you sort of push it in like that, slide it down, it clicks. That's, to me, that's awesome. So you could use it either for bottle cage bosses or for a folding lock or mini pumps or whatever. So for the hard tail where you have that big open diamond, you get two of those. I, I must say though, I'm not sure if you get you know a pair of of bosses if you get the smallest frame size because this does come in like a 35 centimeter That's right yeah yeah so they do the 35 centimeter that doesn't have the plus size tires it's 27.5 but it's definitely good for the shorter riders which you see a lot in the u.s that you know looking for something that works for them yeah whether it's like maybe it's a woman who's petite or sure. uh, a youth someone yeah. who's like really into mountain biking and excited about e-bikes but maybe just not full size yet and this comes in a bunch i mean it was like four other frame sizes right yeah starting at 35 centimeter up to 41 think, 44 yeah. 45 40, 47 and 50, so five, yeah. yeah. There's a lot. This is the the size large, by the way. So I think this is the 47. 47 yeah. um, really nice to see that. Just some general comments. Battery weight low, motor low and centered. And I think we were saying this is 6.3 pounds on that motor. So like the Yamaha and Bosch, I think are seven pounds, eight pounds respectively. The battery we're shaving off a pound or two on that. And again, just the weight, the positioning of it is excellent. The noise. What did you think about how noisy the Shimano was, honestly, versus Yamaha and Bosch? Yeah, I think it's similar. I mean, there is definitely some noise there. It's not, uh, it's not bad by any, you know, stretch. But uh, I think that one of the quieter systems is the Bros system, yeah. partly because they use that belt inside the system. But I think as far as like long term reliability and durability, that's something that's yeah, you know concerning. And and uh, yeah, but um, but yeah, it's not, it's not very loud i think it's in, in line with most of the other systems out there i agree with you this is not silent we'll get out there and i'll put the camera close so you can see for yourself but um it does produce up to 70 newton meters of torque and what did they, shimano had this marketing thing where it's like the first e-mountain bike <laughs> specific mid-drive and we were like are they aware of the bosch performance line yeah the cx, CX motor because that's 75 newton meters specifically and yeah and different elements to it like the you know kind of flow and now they have the e-mountain bike mode which is more dynamic um, yeah yeah you know so yeah i mean i i think it's there's definitely uh, it's becoming a competitive space which is which is great for innovation and maybe their marketing material is a year and a half old and they just didn't <laughs> know at the time sorry <laughs> i'm just saying the other thing i think about a lot compared like comparing the old yamaha what's the first yamaha motor called do we know the one that was on all the high bikes and stuff the s duros yeah i guess just the pw pw yeah. That one, it peaked out at like 100 RPM, right. whereas right. Bosch would go to 120. So for me, as someone who likes to spin quickly, I was always like, Bosch, that was just my preference. And this seems to give you at least 120. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's pretty similar in that regard. And I think that that's really the ideal sort of way of riding to, in order to get optimal power. I mean, all the race guys and everything like that, it's yeah, really about, fast. you know spinning and, and that's how you're gonna produce the optimal power. So it's great that it works in that way. So Chris, I, these reviews end up being super long, right? So sorry, I'm just trying to be thorough. 
And I want to hit a couple other things that I noticed about this bike, and then I'm going to pass it to you if sure. you have anything. So this does have a seat post dropper. It looked like maybe 150 millimeter travel on that. It says RockShox Reverb, but the spec again said Kind Shock. Kind yeah. Shock. We don't really know, but you will get a dropper seat post. Here's the power button. It's kind of built right into the frame. It's nice and clean. That's from an ugly sticker that they had on before we took off, but it, sorry, it won't look like that. Um, we already mentioned all the bosses and stuff. I would, I, I'm interested to know whether these are, um, you know, dual or quad brake, uh, you know, I, and I, we don't know again. Is it a dual, dual piston they'll be? Dual piston, yeah, right. yeah, so dual piston. So that's, you know, it's like, okay, that's that's reasonable. Um, two finger, in this case, your XT levers. These have the tool free adjust on reach. You'll certainly have reach adjust, but I'm not sure if they'll be tool free like this if it's right. a SLX spec. Um, the handlebars on this, this was like, I think it was like 730 length, uh, really short stem flat. So this is the this is kind of the American mountain biking setup. Is that that's right. how I Absolutely. refer it and to it's, it? Yeah, and it's standard parts, so you can definitely swap to swap whatever, it out. You know, 31.8 millimeters on the uh, diameter there. And this was, do you remember 31.6? 31.6, yeah. So, yeah, you know, if you wanted to do something. We were trying to take this out, but it's like, it's internally routed for that dropper post, so we couldn't do a whole lot more. Pedals, we think it comes with these Concept plastic platform pedals. They're just kind of basic, and Concept seems to be the Focus in-house brand. That's right, yep. Yeah, so. Yeah, Focus, and then BBB is actually the brand that they use for the stem and the handlebars, but it's also, you know, something that's, that's uh, an in-house brand for Derby. Yeah. This is, oh, oh, and then, you know, we're, we're about to get into the controls and stuff, but I, I love, just look at this thing. I mean, you can hardly tell it's electric because the display does everything, including DI2, and it's so compact. It is not removable. You can't even swivel it, so you could, you could end up with some glare, depending on, you know, how sunny it is outside. Uh, might take some more damage if you're parking at a rack or whatever, if it's just, but at least it's, it's in, it's pretty tight. It leaves room for your Garmin or some other device, but there's no USB ports or anything to charge your devices. Some of the cheaper bikes have that, you know, there's like a type A port or something on the side of the frame and uh, little things like that. Uh, what do you think about that, Chris? Do you think we'll see something like that from the higher end brands in the future or are, are you know, I think it makes a lot more sense on the commuter bike specifically. I think on mountain bikes, I think you're, a lot of times people don't put too many devices out on there, but I guess, you know, having a Garmin and that sort of stuff could be helpful to be able to charge from. So, yeah. you know, maybe that's good feedback for the manufacturers Just to, a thought, you know. to include that sort of option. I think one of the concerns also with USB specifically, it's very difficult to seal that for water. So uh, when you're doing mountain bikes and you're riding more extreme conditions, I think it's difficult to. Okay. So I'm, I realize I'm getting us a little off track. Just kind of thinking through the cockpit. I do like how clean it is and how the trigger shifters over here actually match the trigger buttons for interacting with your your assist levels i mean that's that's really unique to me um usually there's like a rubberized button pad but this just they click and everything look at this it's it's crazy nothing's being shifted that would just be like button presses um okay so stepping back for a minute here is there anything that you feel like maybe we should discuss that that's been missed and you know, we had all these conversations earlier the tech pack yeah. how could we forget all right so yeah this is the tech pack and it's called the tailored energy concept ah. and basically the idea that you have you know a, a base level of energy on the bike and then you can add additional energy if you need it you can double it so yeah. this is what 378 watt hours again it's the uh, same size that's right yeah so it's 378 watt hours slightly heavier than the battery internally they need to put a little extra you know hardware and protection on it and that sort of thing 0.2 pounds heavier right right so th <laughs> not, you know 4.9 pounds yeah. on this do you want to show how it works Sure, so basically you just click it in similar to the water bottle cage. So we're just gonna line it up here and then just slide it down. So now it's it's fully mounted to the bike, but you're actually not utilizing the power. If you wanted to utilize the power, what you need to do is actually uh, utilize this, this cable here. So you're gonna slide one side in there and then put the other side. Way up here. there. So that is magnetic. That's that cable. You don't want to lose it. And there is like a little valley right here. So it, it keeps it kind of straight. Right. So if you're not using it, you can you can just leave it leave the cable mounted there. Oh yeah. Because one of the That's key cool. things is if 
if it's connected, it's using the accessory battery. If it's not connected, it's using the battery that's internal to the bike. That was interesting to me, especially after reviewing some of the recent Mueller bikes together. Right. The Bosch system sort of recognizes when two batteries are connected, it balances them so that they're both draining and versus cycling one again and again. Right, yeah, I think there's a certain benefit to that sort of, um, you know, condition, but uh, yeah, and it's... Let's play devil's advocate here. The The flip side is that if you ever have a problem with this battery or that interface or something, it's separate. So it's like you're fixing one thing versus a more complicated, I don't know. Sure. It's just kind of thinking, thinking out loud here. We're excited to see, or I am for sure, a lightweight bike that gives you the option on, on range. I feel like their interface is pretty solid, but there is a little rattling. Yeah, it might need some sort of adjustment or something. I'm sure that there, there's there got to be something in there. These are demo bikes. People have been dropping them all day. Yeah. So, I mean, who knows, who knows what's what's going on? Um, should we boot it up? Yeah. Should we do it? Okay, so we hold the power button for a couple seconds, and then it, like, whoosh, like blue. See, it's fading in. And then Shimano steps. There it is. So, again, this is the E8000 motor, right? That's right. So the original Shimano Steps motor is the E6000, which is meant primarily for bikes riding on the road. And this is made specifically as a mountain bike system. Okay. And I've got to say, I didn't love the original E6000 because... I mean, look, it was lightweight, it was compact, it was a cheaper option, but still from a mainstream company, Bosch, Yamaha, whatever, so Shimano right. and Broza. But it, you had to have like a dongle to charge it. There was like an adapter, yeah, whether yeah. you were charging on or off the bike. Some of the early ones, you couldn't even charge it on the bike. So I love that they've taken, they've taken their time and you can charge this battery on the bike. You can't take the battery off by default. Uh, here's the charger. This is two pounds. It's a little bit big. You know, you can unplug that cable over there to make it smaller. There's the magnetic energy bus. We dropped it in the dirt and you can see the stuff sticking to it. That's actually like iron that's getting stuck to it because we're out in the desert here and there's iron. This offers four amp charging, which is great. So it's gonna be faster. We were estimating that this thing would charge up in just like three and a half hours because the battery's more of a modest size and the charger is right. so fast. So that's, I think that's a win for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we'll come back up here to the display panel. By default, you got five ticks. We've only got three out of five right now. To me, that leaves something to be desired. I'd prefer a percentage or maybe 10 ticks, but they do have range. So that's something I call out with Bosch as well. You can kind of estimate how far the bike can go based on the battery, the assist level. I don't know if it gives you, if it's factoring in the last mile of riding like Bosch or not. Yeah, I'm not clear exactly how it's updating specifically. We asked the Shimano guys a bunch of questions. I did yesterday, and they, they came back, and they're like, we don't know. <laughs> so. Yeah, there, there are some specialists here, but they're... In, they're busy. In, it's yeah. Interbike. We'll get back to you is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Slash Shimano, help us out. Come on. And then right here, we've got a, a kind of a speed, like miles per hour ramp. I think that's as power, maybe, as yeah, you're riding. Yeah, how much assistance you're getting at the Right now it's an off, but if we click those clickers, the little one by default goes higher power. So it goes from off to eco to trail to boost. Okay, so those are three levels. Only trail and boost can be modified by the app. It sounds like it's the same Shimano app, the eTube app for every bike. It's not just like Focus will have one. and Right, and, there, and it's the same app that you would actually use. You can modify your uh, DI2 system with the same app. So people might be familiar with it from their road bikes or mountain bikes or whatever that they're That's using cool. in DI2. And so you can adjust some of those settings, like how fast is shifting and that sort of detail. Well, and that's the thing. You can flip around these buttons. So if you want, the little button could be for l lower. Right. Yeah. Same thing over here. So right now, this is actually set up kind of funky for me because the little button is easier gearing and the, the big one's harder. In America, I'm used to the little button being harder, right. whatever. So anyway, we're coming back to the display. That's kind of it. Just more or less power with the triggers. And then if you want to do anything else, you have to hit this little circular button at the bottom. Uh, to cycle through. So we got distance instead of speed, odometer, range, eight miles. And these only show for a little while and then it switches back to speed. Right, the only one that it will stay on is the RPMs. If you wanted to keep an eye on your RPMs, uh, it will stay on that setting. Okay, so range time. We got time, like a timer, average speed, max speed, cadence, is that what we're talking about? Right. RPM. Um, so we, we're going to try to test that like ride and just see what is my cadence and then is the motor still helping? Right, it right. seems like at least 120 is what I was getting clock and then speed miles per hour. If you hold down on this button for a couple seconds, 
it goes into settings and just like before you can turn off the annoying beep noise they don't it doesn't happen as much the beep that i've heard is only like if you're trying to shift into like a higher level of assist that doesn't you're already at the top right it's more a warning I think, yeah. like a warning so yeah we got clear clock bluetooth for setup uh ants the lights if you had lights brightness and then the beep on off units language adjust rd protection reset rio derailleur and then exit so we got exit did you want to say anything else about the display yeah just the adjust on there it will actually adjust how many microseconds between each shift because some oh. people like to shift faster some people want it a little bit slower and you can kind of adjust that to your preference i don't know if this really has shift detection and no one told us about it that'll be something to watch for on our ride test the point is shimano made like a ton of these systems hopefully they're talking to each other it does seem to work well my experience however has been that this is a more active bike meaning you have to push a little bit to even have it engage uh, apparently it's measuring your rear wheel speed pedal cadence and your pedal torque one of the questions i asked is how many times per second you know because right, bosch right. is like a thousand whatever enough it, it measures quickly but it seems to only it almost seems more like a torque sensing thing to me yeah it does seem like that a little bit i mean not to kind of toot the Bosch horn all the time, but you know, yeah. that is the, one of their more advanced parts of their system is their sensors. That's what they're very strong in, so. Yeah, and I don't care. I like all these bikes, but as someone who's actually out here riding, I'm trying to give you a perspective 27 minutes into this video of what, it, what it's actually like to ride. You have, it's like, it's like you're pedaling normal, really light. You're pedaling, pedaling, and then when you push a little harder, you, I actually feel it click. It's almost like, it's like, it, and maybe that's the motor kicking in. I don't know how to describe it. You'll you'll probably see it when we ride. How would you describe it, Chris? Yeah, I think it's it's really just about giving you power when you really need it, um, as opposed to just like right off the line where maybe you don't need it as much. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, specifically if you're climbing something, if it does sense the torque, and and it might be more favoring the torque as you described it. I think that is a little bit more of what's going on there. Yeah, I've also been a fan of trail and boost. I haven't used the Eco much at all. Uh, we, yesterday we were riding on Eurospec bikes that only go 15 miles per hour, 25 right. kilometers per hour. Right. And they, I was like always in boost. And I was like, man, trail, you know, and, they, and so this one, at least this feels a little bit more zippy. I'm yeah, proud found, to be an American actually, today. Yeah, I mean, I, I did find that because I guess it is really up to the manufacturer. They have their ability to set the default specs. I feel like they did kind of spec these up a little bit higher. And with the E2 BAP, you can kind of change some of those settings as well. Uh, so yeah, I mean, even in eco, I did feel like a decent amount of assistance. So it, it was not bad, but yeah, definitely boost and trail is probably more what I would ride in. And on the American bikes, it just feels a little more satisfying. There's a little more juice there. Um, and as if I was in Europe, I would just ride and boost more frequently. I think it would be cool if someday they got 20 mile per hour bikes. I mean, I don't know how, what the legislation is like. Yeah. Uh, well, they don't have any systems for 28. I don't know if that's in their future. At the moment, they're not really looking to do it. Hmm. Like, actually, there's some bikes where, so they, they'll they support uh, e-shift with Bosch, for example. And if it's a 28 mile an hour bike, they won't actually support it on that system. Really? But they'll support it on a 20 mile an hour system. There's a bike specifically that we're taking to the US. It's like a special edition bike that it's like super high end bike and it's 20 miles an hour. So for some people's application, it doesn't really make much sense for them, but it's really kind of the limitation of Shimano specifically. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, coming back to, in some ways there's like all these hardware considerations and stuff and we're dealing with like a rock shocks fork and you have some choices. Now we're looking at drive systems and each drive system seems to have its, its pros and cons or its considerations that, you know, again, this one's just so compact and light and it is very capable. I've been climbing pretty well with it. Uh, I, th I think overall, Focus has done a really good job with this bike and, and they're leading the way right now in my mind in terms of like a design, but I'm just not sure if I love the Shimano motor as much as I like, like the Broza is a little smoother for me and quieter. Bosch is a little bit like more fluid feeling, even though you have that ring, ring, you know, it's, it's just, I don't, I don't have this like clunk into gear. Um, so I don't know, uh, there's, those are some of the trade-offs. Might be a good time to hop on this thing. You have any more thoughts before we head out? No, excited to ride. Sweet. Well, let's let's give it a just a quick ride, and maybe I can cruise next to you and see what that's all about. Sounds good.
Feels really good. I'm just an eco. Still giving me assistance up to 15. Probably max out around 15 before I'd wanna go up to boost. Oh, nice. Do a little bit of climbing here. No problem. I mean, they rate these motors like 250 to 500 watt, but I mean, I am having no problem. This is a very steep section. I haven't had to get up out of my saddle. Just enjoying it. Beautiful. What mode were you in there? Uh, trail mode. Just trail, so not even boost. He could have been in a lower gear too, that was really smooth. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I feel like these motors are very capable in terms of power for climbing. Okay guys, I'm gonna coast down this little hill and we get to some pavement and just do some starts and stops. I am in boost mode, like the highest level. So you should be able to hear it, like sort of the strongest, the, the noisiest that the motor is. And then I'm gonna pedal, I'm gonna shift through some of those gears, I'm gonna listen for, I'm gonna try to gauge my RPM max. And so just, you know, listen, see what you think. I got up to 141 RPM and the motor was still going in that sort of like high pitch sound. Also before when you heard it like starting and stopping, that's because I was at 20 miles per hour, it was cutting out. And then I'd dip below and it would help and it would cut out. So it was really nice. I was actually able to pedal uphill faster than 20 miles per hour and I didn't feel uh, weighed down at all. So Chris just drove by on, on his bike. He's on the jam squared and we're shifting pretty hard and it was like ting, ting. It, it really doesn't seem like it's, it's dipping the power at all. Maybe it's communicating, but it, it still doesn't seem like a really great shift detection, if, if any. So from here, you can see the sprockets. I'm gonna shift. I'm gonna be pedaling hard when I shift just to see you know, how it responds. I, I think you're probably better off you, you know, babying the, the drivetrain, just like most electric bikes with mid-drive. Uh, it, because it does rely on a torque sensor. If you ease off a little bit, it's gonna shift a lot smoother. So anyway, here we go.
Well, we've had a bunch of fun riding out here. I want to thank Chris again. Really appreciate your insights. Pleasure. You know, it's great to get out here with a buddy too. And we were able to take the jam squared and the bold square. This is the plus. It's got the plus size tires. So many options. Really need to see another, you know, a big competitor entering the space. And I have a lot of respect for Shimano. Yeah, without a doubt. It's just uh, definitely exciting. Focus makes some great bikes. And yeah, I think it's going to do really well. It's good stuff. For the full write-up on this, we have scrutinized the details as best as we could since this is kind of a European spec bike. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Again, the measurements and everything and some comments. Feel free to chime in. We've done our best to be thorough. Have fun out there. Ride safe.